Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be discussing the fascinating case of the corrugated cabin cruisers. Now, this bizarre event occurred on the French island of Réunion in the Indian Ocean near Madagascar on the 31st of July, 1968. Around nine o'clock in the morning, a 31-year-old farmer by the name of Monsieur Luce Fontaine was out gathering grass for his rabbits in a small clearing in a forest of acacia trees when he suddenly saw what he referred to as an oval-shaped cabin about 25 meters away. Now, this egg-shaped object, or cabin as Luce called it, was about four or five meters above the ground. However, unlike most UFOs, it was not hovering or floating there. Rather, it was supported on a kind of stalk or foot which appeared to be made out of shining glass or metal and flared towards the bottom. Now, this stalk was reflected in the same fashion above, forming a symmetrical object. Now, the witness claimed that the cabin itself appeared translucent in the middle. He described it as kind of like uh, the windscreen on a car, and this kind of light blue shade. The outer edges, he claimed, were a darker blue and less opaque, and that the whole thing shone like aluminum. Now, if this bizarre object was not weird enough, Luce claimed that through the central windscreen-like section of the cabin, he could see two small individuals, each roughly 90 centimeters or around three feet tall. They both were wearing, and strap yourselves in for this one, corrugated padded coveralls that the witness likened to that of the Michelin Man. Both beings were facing away from Luce when he first saw them. However, as soon as he noticed them, immediately the one on the left turned all the way around to face him, while the one on the right turned its head to look at him. Luce could then see that their faces were obscured by some type of translucent helmet. Both beings then turned their backs to him, and as soon as this happened, Luce's vision was absorbed by a bright flash of light, which he claimed to be as intense as the arc of a welding machine. Not only did everything turn this bright white, but he claimed that there was a gust of wind and a flash of powerful heat. Finally, when his vision came back, the object was completely gone. Now, Luce informed his wife of what had happened, as well as local law enforcement, who eventually undertook an investigation. Surprisingly enough, they actually found a degree of radioactivity, very slight, on grass and pebbles in the area where Luce claimed that the object had been, though no other trace of it remained. His clothes also retained traces of radioactivity, though it is claimed that this was only on the sides of his clothing that had faced the object, and this was even after a period of 10 days had elapsed. I will also note that when this was reported in Flying Saucer Review, it was titled Contact Casualty on Reunion. This is due to reports that circulated that the witness, Lou Spontane, had experienced the effects of radiation poisoning so badly that he was flown to the Curie Foundation in Paris. However, this was quickly found not to be the case. Rather, these rumors had actually been started by the Fontaine family to get themselves some peace and quiet from the constant barrage of investigators looking into the event. It is true, however, that Luce claimed to have suffered some slight effects from proximity to radiation, though as to what extent, I'm not sure. Now, in addition to Luce's case, a couple of weeks later, a cigar-shaped object was also spotted over Reunion. Now, the first thing that really caught my eye in this case was the drawing from the description, um, which showed this kind of egg-shaped object with the two entities inside, um, and then this kind of flared stalk on either side above and below. Now, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that was the symbol of the world tree. Now, specifically, the first thing that came to my mind was the Norse representation of this, which is Yggdrasil, um, which is usually portrayed as having these flared roots and flared branches, with Midgard in the center in this kind of oval or egg shape because it's encircled by the serpent Jormungandr. Now, to go a step even further as far as, you know, this particular representation, but also other mythological representations, um, some scholars dictate that the tree known as Hatmimus Holt, where the two sole survivors of Ragnarok eventually hide, is just another name for Yggdrasil. Um, so again, and this is a, a step, a very tenuous step, but is this a possible connection to the two beings inside of this, you know, supposed craft or cabin? Um, this trifecta of trees or columns, two beings, as well as a serpent-like entity, um, this is a common thread seen through many world mythologies, not least of which include Christianity and Shintoism. Now, the symbolism in this encounter is continued in the central object being this egg shape, through which these hidden figures are revealed through the translucent windscreen. And at its core, the two, you know, feet or stalks that connect the cabin connect it both to the earth as well as the sky. Um, I know I just mentioned this in a recent video, the silver-suited soil sampler, that it seems as though, you know, when people experience these anomalies, 
there seems to be callouts both to other worlds above and below. Um, and in this case, you know, I think it's really interesting that you have, again, these very strong kind of symbolic elements um, to something which also had a very highly non-symbolic aspect, which is that this guy was exposed to radiation. Now, once again, true, the levels were said to be non-dangerous, just higher than normal. Um, this was a good 10 days after the event that things were measured, though. You know, especially given that this sighting, this event, produced this wave of heat and a brilliant flash of light, as well as the accompanying radiation. This is a really great case to kind of explore the dichotomy of a very symbolic experience, which is accompanied by a physically measurable series of events. Um, it's something truly paradoxical. There are other aspects of this case, too, that fall into the many patterns that I'm extremely interested in, um, such as the flash of light, which in this case ended the encounter. Um, the gust of wind, which is seen not just in UFO encounters, but in the fairy faith, as well as even, you know, the strange drafts that people feel in haunted locations. In addition to this, there's also the aspect of how both beings acknowledged the witness's presence. Um, you know, when they were done, it appeared as though the encounter was done altogether. Um, and I know I've been going on recently about how it seems as though so many encounters with anomalous beings, there is this interplay of the witness being witnessed by the thing that they are witnessing. Now, finally, one of the most intriguing facts about this encounter to me is that you have this highly symbolic encounter, which is accompanied by physically measurable events, and then the beings inside of the object. Um, the man claimed were dressed as almost little Michelin man. You know, yet again, it shows that whatever these central anomalies truly are, you know, whatever that form is, if there even is a central form, it does appear to clothe itself in the dressings or trappings of any given time or culture. Well, if you enjoyed this episode on the corrugated cabin cruisers, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I might possibly be doing on my free blog on patreon.com slash justanothertinfoilhat. And for today, I am Zelia Edgar, signing off. Do we?